Before we show you a series of challenge images emphasizing Focomilia, I like to say a few preliminary words. We chose Focomilia to be highlighted because it was instrumental in establishing teratology as a medical discipline. This has to do with the observation of a tragic epidemic of Focomilia that followed the introduction of a new medication called thalidomide. Once it was determined that thalidomide was a cause of the epidemic, two consequences were of extreme importance. First, the demonstration of a relationship of a medication to specific patterns of developmental anomalies destroyed a long-standing dogma. This dogma held that such anomalies had to be of genetic nature. That is, they were either new mutations or inherited from the parents. This then triggered political and social enthusiasms that generally were called eugenic programs. Hitler was one of the enthusiasts, and so were those who established the Kellogg Foundation in the US. These enthusiasts managed to impose mandatory sterilization of individuals with developmental anomalies, and then went further, managed to create euthanasia programs where such individuals were actually killed and where parents of such children were compulsorily or forcefully sterilized. Another positive impact of the thalidomide Focomilia epidemic was the establishment of state agencies that were charged to prevent repetition of such tragedies. These agencies to this day control <coughs> the introduction of medications which first have to be proven to be safe for the unborn. Be aware, however, that this principle is being corroded because thalidomide is back on the market and is being sold because a group of adults with generally lethal disorders may benefit from its use. It is like if exposing to risk the unborn is politically less uh, of less impact than helping generally elderly patients to live a little longer. This is the first challenge image concerning Focomilia. The image represents a tetra Focomilia, in other words, a reduction anomalies of all four limbs. Please open your eyes because this image has many signs that if you are experienced represent in fact signals to interpret better its etiology, pathogenesis and eventually diagnosis. So here is a full-size picture. Please be systematic when you make your mental list of what are the signs of normal or not so normal development. I prefer to look at proportions and symmetries in addition to specific landmarks of morphogenesis. So look at the proportions of the elements of the face, the ear, the head, neck, chest, abdomen proportions. Spend some time looking, repeat the video, and I will give you 10 seconds to complete your examination. Now close your eyes and tell me, how are the nipples? Is she pregnant?
So, are he, so here is your chance to make your mental notes a reality. I will start by saying that the facial morphogenesis appears to be undisturbed. And now you continue. Is she pregnant? Is she fertile? What is a sign or a signal? A sign is something you see, but you may not know what it's trying to tell you. A sign you understand is sending you a signal, is sending you a message. A sign here is that the abdomen appears somewhat large in the context that her face and neck do not appear to be obese. Is that a signal of pregnancy? It's up to you to decide. After this presentation and before you see the next four, maybe you should brush up on the basics of terminology and dysmorphology. It will help you to understand the precise definitions of words such as sign signals, etc. So, <clears throat> here you see the five challenge images of Focomilia that we call Focomilia series a. We have seen the very first. And somewhere along the way you may wish to know more about thalidomide and its history. One of the scientists that demonstrated the connection between a medication, in this case thalidomide, with serious developmental anomalies, in this case Focomilia, etc., etc., was Dr. Lens. And if you go back to our website, you can find more links or directly look for them in the internet. On the right, there is an image of a famous opera singer. That indicates that, at least in some instances, the intellectual development of those with thalidomide embryopathy is not impacted. That speaks that teratogens can and generally do have quite specific impacts on some systems and smaller or no impact on other developmental systems. So I hope you visit back our website and continue from there on part B. Please be warned that part B is limited access to only those viewers who register in our website.